Hey there, everyone. Uh, I am Pruitt, and and this is Jim this Davis. Is, this is me. Yeah, this is I, – I, I, you know, we turned this on, and I was like, what are we doing? I, my mind just went blank, like an itch sketch. Pruitt, <laughs> well, it what is are way. we doing here? We are in boxes uh, mostly because of social distancing. We basically uh, wanted to give you a little, little framing here. Yeah. We yeah, were yeah. lucky enough – our last shoot was right before uh, – the COVID-19 hit in full or it hasn't hit in, in the U S yeah. It, but before it hit the U S and so we did get our shows in. Um, so we were lucky in that regard. Right. And as another kind of luck would have it, well, we had a request, <laughs> yeah, we had a patron <laughs> request. perhaps. Yeah. Uh, yes. A uh, patron request to do a show on diseases and Dungeons and Dragons. And we shot a great show on how to use them in your campaigns, mm -hmm. uh, both as a, a campaign framework and an individual PC framework. But it needs context given the scale of the events <laughs> that have uh, transpired since then, right? <laughs> yeah, and we wanted to give it proper framing. We just didn't want you to think that, oh, we just do this blase attitude about <laughs> what's going on and we're not, there's, so just keep that in mind. Um, yes. Because yeah. we're, we're, we're still here. We're, we're still going to want to keep giving you all the Wednesday show. So this is also a bit of maybe a, an intro to expect to see some of this perhaps. Yeah, some some green screen and yeah. like here's here's my books. Uh, here's a dollar bill signed by Luke Gygax. Yeah, uh, and you know maybe we'll do a, a show coming up on like how to game online. I so can definitely see that because I think there's still something to be said yeah. about virtual gaming and virtual tabletops and the like that hasn't been yet in the major uh, stuff I've read so far. So yeah, I, I think something like that might be a bad too. Enjoy this episode. Uh, stay strong out there. I know it's scary, uh, but just be smart about everything. Uh, d don't group up. There's a reason for social distancing and washing your hands properly and not touching your face. I work in a hospital, as some yeah. viewers know. I'm a pharmacy tech. I go to work. I wash my hands 150,000 times a day now. I take three showers a day. So please make our job that much easier. Please, please, please. This time is a weird uh, moment. I've been working from home for seven years now uh, in various jobs. And uh, so for me, that transition occurred a long time ago, but it's a rough one going yeah. from work and the, uh, the separation between work and home. If you're fortunate enough to be working from home uh, these days, even if you're not just hanging out, uh, can get bored or <laughs> can get boring yeah. rather you can get bored. Uh, we are here to help you uh, some of that. Listen, do whatever, watch. Uh, we're going to have some more live content, I think, but uh, mm -hmm. let us be a friend uh, for a few hours a week and uh, to get through this together because this is like a world historic event. Yeah. With all that said, uh, all that said, let's learn about a little bit more about diseases. Certainly. Web DM. This week's sponsor is Dungeon Craft, Hell and High Water by 1985 Games. Build your own battle maps in no time at all by using over a thousand pieces of gorgeous reversible terrain. And Hell and High Water is about demons and pirates. What more do you need to play D&D? They've got ships, demons, ancient evils, ports, hellish wastelands, ancient architecture, infernal machines, sunken relics, and more. They're a cool looking, easy to store, and affordable way to level up your combat. We've used Dungeon Craft in most of our home games since we got it. We can't say enough good things about them. Check it out. Link in the description and comments. Okay, Jim. It's a time of, 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 of viruses, diseases spreading, mm. things like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. while that is scary for some, Sure. I think also it's a chance to look at the news of the day, how these things spread, the reactions to them, things like that. Yeah. When it comes to diseases. Yeah, yeah. A and little ripped from the headlines. Yeah, a little yeah. ripped straight from the headlines and into your D&D &D game. Mm, because yes. you don't need to think of how your world reacts, right? <laughs> yeah. You can right. just read how it reacts. <laughs> Uh, the gladiator yeah. arena is closed down. Sure, uh, yes. Uh, all the, the winter uh, festival is just gone. But yeah, let's talk about diseases. Let's in your talk game. about diseases. Diseases and like epidemics and like are such a powerful force in human history mm -hmm. uh, in terms of their effect on the course of human history and event, especially outside of like the the Black Death, plague, all that that kind of business. Mm -hmm. um, the way that diseases and resistance to diseases is played out over. Uh, the course of human development, the way that disease has been 
you know, taken advantage of by people, exploited either on purpose or mm-hmm. just as an opportunity, the way that diseases kind of clear the playing field <laughs> in some ways and certain certain some types of history and create like power vacuums and disrupt yeah. and it's all these kinds of things that that add a sense of the unknown and and, and uh, contingency to historical events like what ifs and if this didn't happen then this other thing would have they're also like warfare like political violence something that's probably going on in the background of your world somewhere yeah if if you're if you're willing to like flesh that out just a little bit and use sort of a, a news from afar or or like news of the realm uh, type, uh, mm-hmm. you know, system for generating rumors and what, what the players hear as they wonder about. So, yeah, I think, like, diseases are one of those things, not that we're, like, adding more stuff to y'all's DMing plates, but, you know, something to think about that can be a really interesting vector, if you mm-hmm. forgive the pun for, uh, <laughs> adding in a lot of tension uh, on both a, a macro and a micro scale to your games. Mm-hmm. And especially when I think in terms of 5th edition, yeah, I really fifth edition D and D. I really think diseases are very underutilized. And when you look at sort of the the little section in the DMG that that sort of like talks about diseases, it contains within it a promise of ways to get around some of the things in fifth edition. If you're looking for like an in rules loophole and you don't just want to be like, no, I don't like this, I'm changing it, then you can do some interesting things with diseases mechanically that we'll get to later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think there there's something about illnesses, sickness, the, uh, the way it, the way it what, spreads, you know, yeah. all of everything. Yeah, it's the unseen assailant. Yeah, right? I yeah. mean, you don't know who has it. Yeah, and it's not like there is uh, there doesn't always have to be malicious malicious intent behind it. Yeah, I mean diseases just exist. Sure, tromping along in dungeons and brackish water and and all these places where it's I mean filthy. these are just incubators, yeah, right? Just right. waiting to be brought back into town along with all that treasure. Yeah, it's a way to add a new wrinkle to the game. Yeah, that isn't the standard like kick down the door and you know. Yeah, yeah, it's something that you know players aren't usually expecting. It, it, it's it's a threat and a menace that that cuts past the usual threats and menaces, right? Mm-hmm. Like if I'm running a game where, you know, there's just a nasty virulent plague that that's uh, running its course and like the players, I, I suppose would, would maybe wonder like, is my character vulnerable? Are there steps that I need to take? Like, how do I operate in this environment? I've certainly played with some players who sort of think that, oh, well, I'm, I'm the hero and the pro- protagonist of the story. Like, I don't have to worry about this. I'm not going to accidentally catch the plague. And again, I think there are some uh, games of D&D where that could be appropriate, where you just say like, yeah, this is not meant to threaten the party. It's meant to create tension that the party resolves or has to deal with. Uh, But then there are certainly those others where, yeah, the the possibility of a character PC or someone connecting or uh, uh, the possibility of a PC... uh, you know, contacting one of these things and and, and getting <laughs> getting sick, mm-hmm. having this disease or whatever it is, uh, is very. I don't know. I like that. It, it's it adds an element of danger, and it's and because it's a disease, it's like it can be debilitating without being deadly. Yeah, it can do a variety of things, and sort of like letting the players know, yeah, this is another. Like you're not immune to this just because uh, <laughs> you know unless but you're I'm resistant to disease. <laughs> right. You like, yeah. advantage. Um, you roll with advantage and you still fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It also gives classes like the paladin to sh- a chance to shine. Like the fact that the paladin is immune to diseases. Yeah. Does have the ability to have some sort of access of curative powers, and and kind of plays up that connection to the divine that paladins have, or Celt clerics or druids or whoever. But like specifically the paladin because of their immune unity coupled with uh, curative powers and so i keep coming back to real world examples and sort of like the ways in which uh, you know epidemics and disease Mm -hmm. affect people and like the way it makes them change their behavior and the impact that it has on societies as well yeah we think of a black death and like yeah let's get to it you know europeans obsession with death afterwards Mm -hmm. right like you know when we think of sort of um medieval art and literature and like death it, it sort of like enters into the the artistic sense and after we're much more prominently because it's like you're having to deal with the great mortality this is when all these people start dying and you know what do you do with all of them how do you deal with the social uh chaos that that creates how do you figure out a way to uh you know to, to cure this or survive it like why wouldn't you think something of this scale and magnitude is sent for from God, 
to you know to punish you or the result of supernatural origins mm -hmm. you know it, it's kind of one of those things where before you have a, an understanding of the world and something of this scale defies explanation yeah you don't even come close to being able to really understand what's going on even as they're grasping to even though you have doctors at the time like all right well i, I got the you know the play myself i'm gonna just see what happens record my experience and uh some of them actually lived yeah others are like yeah i, I can't leave these people in trouble i uh, you know whether it's their patrons uh in the ruling classes or a sense of obligation to you know mm -hmm. citizenry that's staying and helping others so there's still sort of a a sense of, of a modern reaction, even when we go back and, and look at things through history. A lot of times diseases draw communities closer together. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're talking about, you go further back and you look at, say, the early Christianization of the Roman Empire, a lot of times you have a growth in uh, church communities following epidemics, following you know instances of plague, famine, illness, because it's like that hardship brings people together. And so you could maybe use that for, you know, fodder for your own games as to an explanation for why a certain you know, tribal alliance is what it is mm -hmm. or why a certain city has a particular you know loyalty uh or or a strong identity to itself but jumping forward in history we look at something like the impact of disease in the new world and the the european diseases that the 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 you know native inhabitants of central america and south america and north america like had to deal with even yeah. before you start thinking about all of the invasions and enslavement and the like, just the spread of disease through those societies in a lot of places meant that by the time, you know, further waves of settlers would get there, that they'd be empty. And, yeah. you know, you, people land like, well, we're here, you know. <laughs> um, uh, and yet we go back and look at the evidence. You know, there were thriving societies there. And in many ways, the colonization and expansion in, in North America, at least, is through a post-apocalyptic landscape as the societies that were there before had to deal with the ravages of disease and and have to adjust to a new way of life that in them they have to deal with invaders so yeah. it's like you could use something like that for uh, your own games as as you know whether that's the players who are part of that society dealing with the aftermath of it and the impact of a disease mm -hmm. or um you know they're part of a group that's taking advantage of the devastation that a disease has caused and dealing with the implications of that so many different ways that this can be used on a macro level mm -hmm. to drive tension and excitement and adventure in your games. Exactly. So let's let's get into. I mean, we've already mentioned the Black Death, but let's yeah. get into some of the, some other types of, of diseases, um, whether they are uh, mundane or magical. I mean, yeah. there's obviously you know lycanthropy. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, sure. and like mummy rot. I mean, these are these are well known D and D diseases. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where they 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 switch between disease and curse sometimes between editions. Well, I, was, I, I was just about to ask, you, you know, know like lycanthropy <laughs> and like vampirism. Yeah, like, is it a disease, is it a or, a disease or a curse? Yeah, yeah, what's the difference between a curse and a magical disease? Like raw rules is written, blah blah. It, you know, these are curses, and I think that's to get around the paladin. I, I, you know what I mean? And, and in this sense, I take that as a game artifact. No one in the game world would, or very few people in the game world would treat them that separately, especially lycanthropy, right? It's transmitted through a bite. It, 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 mm -hmm. has the, it has all of the characteristics that we would see of being a disease, sort of like it's got this vector and a period of incubation, and then it's yeah. got the symptoms. And, uh, mummy rot, I, I take to be you know, a curse just because of the cursed nature of mummies. But you could easily say it's a result of the filth that, say, a bog mummy, yeah. uh, you know, lives in or the, uh, you know, the dust of ages that a more dry, uh, you know, sort of mummy would uh, would deal with. You yeah, know, you just... yeah, you open that sarcophagus and breathe in yeah. the remnants of a mummy. <laughs> right. It should affect you somehow. I, which is <laughs> weird because people thought mummies had curative powers in our own world, that you would eat powdered mummy to help yourself, you know, and it was a big trade. <sighs> In powdered mummy at one point. <laughs> All my years of medical experience are just like, I'm getting a, a headache. Yeah. yeah, so I, I have used powdered mummy as an ingredient for healing potions in the past. Like, you, oh. uh, you know, uh, that's, uh, yeah. You Tell you to heal your evil claret. Yeah. <laughs> So like that, but that is a question, right? Because that was my first thought as well. We were thinking about the shows like Lycanthropy, Mummy Rot first came to me, but then you look in the, the you know, the Monster Man of the Rule Book, there's curses. Some, to me, Mummy Rot seems like it's described as both a curse and a disease, but um, I, I think that it's a DM's call uh, for these. And the line between curse and disease 
is really only applicable when you start talking about magic and how it gets cured. Mm-hmm. You know, is it a second level spell? Is it a third level spell? Well, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and quite so often, that's what that's what I think. Why we wanted to do this video is because a lot of times, like disease is just kind of like a hand waved by yeah. just oh you have the spell and it's gone yeah yeah you know. you know it's is it are these really supposed to be things that cease to be threats after second level you know <laughs> is it really that you're going to be able to like cure these things individually within your party but if you come across the similar scenario in like a big group of people you can't just magic your way out of it and so it creates this weird space where the party can create immunity for themselves through magic. Mm-hmm. But like the rest of the world around them might be just dying or ravages. And you know, is that what makes them heroes? Is that what makes them the people to help out here? Maybe, but it also limits the DM's option in the kinds of tensions they can create, you know, within the party itself. And if you're running a more like personal uh, kind of game, then you might want that. I think this is one where messing with the rules for diseases, you know, baking into the rules their own specific cures so that you can't just magic them away with a second level slot is is how I would do that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, listen, okay, so for one, maybe I treat the magical disease like a spell and lesser restoration is like a dispel magic type thing where the, the disease has a level and if it's greater than two, <laughs> then you're going to have to roll to see if that lesser restoration cures that disease or, or maybe something even, uh, you know, that requires even more hoops to jump through. Like you got to be in a specific place or specific time, mm-hmm. uh, taking inspiration from our own world. Like there was for a long time, <laughs> the, the link between your body and the illnesses and diseases, which are, of course, as we all know, imbalances of the humors. I was gonna right? say, that's why humors, you get sick. Yeah, you get those uh, humors out of whack. <laughs> and that those are tied to the, to the stars. Mm-hmm. That that as above, so below. And if there's something wrong in uh, Scientology, your, got right? it. <laughs> if there's something wrong in your horoscope, then you're probably gonna get sick and you gotta restore the balance there. And like, it's easy to kind of poke fun at that sort of way of thinking, but it's also, easy to translate that into a real thing that exists in your real D and D world where it's yeah. like that, you know, you don't get sick because germs in your body and all this other stuff. You get sick because a demonic spirit is attacking your soul, right? You get sick because there's an imbalance in the elemental humors of your mm-hmm. body and you need to rebalance that somehow, you know? Yeah. One, 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 uh, kind of, uh, cause, uh, or vector for uh, disease, magical disease. I'd like to think about is, you know, everybody casts spells and yeah that's great but you know when you're learning how to cast spells and you don't cast a spell just right like what if you as a wizard can contract some kind of magical disease from that the yeah. leftover energy yeah. infects you because it's been twisted yes um yeah. and you didn't get it out properly yeah and you got yeah. it it's all it's all in your throat and you got mm, i got oh, yeah. something well and, and like you got a sick spell you know yeah. like you know how are you gonna how are you gonna attract uh you know the ethereal beings of magic into your mind prison mm-hmm. and not screen them for disease exactly you know? <laughs> so. well i mean like think about uh the witcher yeah and and uh, uh yeah uh-huh. with the with the genie yeah i yeah, mean yeah. like he gets afflicted with a disease that starts to take his throat away right yeah. uh, like that's what i like to think like you would say oh that was a curse it's like no i think he afflicted him with the with a disease that would yeah. literally destroy yeah. his throat yeah uh, this yeah this is where D and sort Sorry. of rpgs <laughs> of obsession with categorization and and sort of a that modern sensibility of this is a this is the box it fits in yeah and it doesn't go outside its box it's like eh. Curse, disease, you know, I, you know, a disease could give you a curse, you know, in this case, it's, there could be like free forming magical diseases that don't require an intent or will behind them. But like once you contract them, mm-hmm. it behaves as a magical curse mm-hmm. and vice versa. Right. Like this is a lot of ways how I see lycanthropy working. You are cursed with a disease. Yeah. Because you, you don't use those essential oils, Jim. Right. You got to yeah. use the proper essential oils. If you do. You do. Uh, but I understand, you know, I understand why it's, uh, they've got the separation. I just think it's one of those things that DMs should consider up for grabs and yeah, yeah. not necessarily feel like they've got to abide by that sharper distinction. So, exactly. Yeah. And, and whether it's magical or mundane, I mean, if you're going through the jungle and you get, uh, and you get the trots, you know, 
that just happens. It just happens. Like, yeah. It's just bad. Yeah, to just be don't there. drink the water. Yeah, that's why you really <laughs> want to make sure you're purifying food and drink before every time you eat, even yeah. though you have rations in your pack. Yeah. You need to purify that because it got infected. It with got something. infected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do the diseases just have to target the PCs and players? I yeah. mean, yeah, there, I there could be around. other uh, other targets, right? You know, sometimes in D and D, you're you're running a game and you start thinking about the scenario you're going to cook up, and you're like, wait a minute, this is like easily overcome by this combination of magic. Maybe you're like I'm super obsessive about the rules, and you just know that, even though your players would never fruit never reach the same conclusion. Like you just feel that. <laughs> yeah. Then you can sort of like get around some of that with a disease. It's like, are you worried about, uh, you know, someone dying that you want to stay dead in Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, lo and behold, disease does not render resurrection possible. It does something to the body. It does something to the soul. It, 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 it ravages their, it, their very existence, erases them from all memory or something. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can get around some of those common D and isms that mm -hmm. seem to frustrate DMs by the use of a magical disease because it's like it changes the rules of the game for the person it affects. Yeah, and like when I think of diseases, that's the number one thing I come across with. It's like this fundamentally changes the rules. We could do anything with a magical disease. You want to take away proficiencies, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Like this is the babble disease. It removes your facility for language. Yeah. Oh, I know, <laughs> Elvin. <laughs> wait, wait, what happened? You know, maybe the disease affects memory in general and you start losing class features, other proficiencies, things spell like slots. that. Mm -hmm. Spell slots, a magic eating disease that like eats the spell slots in your brain, in your, in your being, or it, it causes you to, to forget uh, the spells that you know. Uh, you know, imagine a bard or a sorcerer that is inflicted with like a magic eating memory loss spell and they just start forgetting how to access the magic that's within them. Eventually you'd reach a point where they don't even remember that they had a disease that did this. Yeah. You know, that they just have forgotten that they were ever capable of magic at all. And that's it. They're not dead. They're not anything. It's just what happens. They contracted amnesia. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the symptoms that get you, right? And that brings up another thing. Like, what are your, what are the body's natural or, or evolved defenses against these kinds of things? Is there something like that? Is that represented in the saving mm -hmm. throw? Or is there something else uh, that worked there? Well, yeah. and if you look at, at diseases, uh, viruses, things like that in our own world, I mean they evolve, they change. Sure, yeah. So maybe that's why lesser restoration doesn't work anymore oh, on sure. this disease. Sure, yeah. Because guess what? It figured it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it figured it out. The demon goddess of diseases was like, no, yeah. you gotta stop second little spell? Come on, mm -hmm. change, the, thing. No, <laughs> change no. the rules of the game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, <laughs> I, I really like that because once you start introducing those supernatural elements, you open the door for like some really cool world building, mm -hmm. uh, some interesting uh, scenarios that you can throw at the players uh, to just, you know, enrich your game. Like if a diseases can have supernatural origins, if they can come from magic, from spirits, from imbalance of the internal alchemy of your body then that means like the cures the medicine the 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 you know the palliative elements of it are also supernatural mm -hmm. and so you could say like yeah i've got to visit a literal spirit doctor not not in the sort of derogatory tribal sense but like this person's gonna help me with my spirit and is gonna help the, the harmful spirits that are attacking it and you go and getting uh, cured is not just a, a matter of uh, having a spell cast on you but it might be involve an exorcism it might involve you realigning yourself into cosmic harmony mm -hmm. it might involve you having to eat or drink certain things to change up the internal balance of what's going on inside your character's bodies. There's like all these different ways you can. Yeah, you gotta do. You gotta drink that. Up. Yeah, you gotta drink that onion and banana juice. <laughs> so you can open your chakras, yes. let your chi flow. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And also drawing from uh, other literature, uh, fantastical representations of diseases. Like I love the grayscale in Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it's this horrible thing that is a slow creep right. towards an inevitable conclusion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, how, do, how does the so society deal with that? Well, we just ship them off to, the, to yeah. this island over here. <laughs> right. <Where> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing else to really do. Yeah. Like, Our hands are tied or, you know, panic's going to set in if we, if we try to address this. Like, the societal uh, ramifications for some of these. You know, especially if it's like, if the disease changes you somehow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm thinking, you know, classic sense in, in pop culture would be like whatever disease causes zombies. Oh, yeah, the, zombie yeah, movie, yeah. Right? the T virus, disease. the whatever, yeah. sure. you know, 
Yeah, that thing that was in the first season of Walking Dead that they forgot about. And it's like, wait, so everybody has this? How did that happen? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we're all carriers, aliens, man. Space aliens. It's encoded in our DNA <laughs> right. when we were built as the worker class. By the engineers, the yeah. It's like Jurassic Park. <laughs> 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 so we can't escape. Supernatural cures, you have these supernatural origins, all kinds of ways that you can add depth to your game. These are role-playing encounters. These are fetch quests involving, you know, fantastic locations to get ingredients. Uh, tension without uh, violence, necessarily. So, mm -hmm. in that sense, they're really fun. I think of magical diseases, and I start wanting to operate on levels above the physical. And like, we've kind of started to talk about that, but I'm like, oh yeah, diseases of the soul. Well, like, you know, I, yeah. I was going to ask you, I think this is a good lead in. What did race, what did Raceland get afflicted with? Ooh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. With the, okay. So with the, for the eyes and the skin. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, it's more of just like uh fist and Danless yeah. attack, uh, basically attached to his soul. Yeah. And I mean, in, in kind of acted like a, a parasite or disease yeah. that infected him and, and drew his life force away. Ooh. Yeah. But, but I mean, when you think about that, like spiritual diseases spiritual disease, yeah. that, that attack your, your soul and your essence, I mean, yeah. that's going to start, that's going to start dragging you down. It's going to start affecting your, your rests, uh, levels of exhaustion. I, I, this is one of those where I might, I'm, I, I kind of like, you might be justified in taking levels away. Like, I'm not sure if you would go the, <laughs> I'm not sure that you would go the, the old school route of like, it actually removes your level. Or if it's like the third edition route of it gives you functionally a condition known as negative level, which is kind of averages out everything. So you don't have to I mean, subtract you... out your hit points yeah. and all that stuff. But something like that, something that imposes a, maybe it, it, it goes further than just like you can't heal, but it's like you don't even get your hit dice back. You don't get the things that rejuvenate and refresh you back. You are, your, your essence is exhausted mm -hmm. fighting off this thing. And you were in a, this weakened state because of it. Um, you know, there's something like that. Something that's like conveys to the player that like, this is serious. Yeah. The rules of the game have changed. This is not something you can fight, you know, with a sword. It's not something that's going to be dealt with in one spell. This is like a challenge you're going to have to overcome. Every group's going to be different with that. A lot of players do not like those kinds of things being threatened. You know, anything outside of their hit point box, <laughs> they'll get very upset about. Like, which I find interesting, because the hit point yeah. box leads to the ultimate condition, which right. is death. Sure, yeah. And this is just like, well, you just don't get to use your second wind until you fix it. Right. It's like, how dare you? <laughs> right. It's like, well, <laughs> you can do everything else. It, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure why, but I've, I've noticed that uh, as well. And I, you know, a resistance in, in sort of the 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 hobby space for things that like take your stats away things that impose permanent uh you know negative penalties upon you you know not really part of our gaming moment but like to completely deny yourself those options and we've had several shows in a similar vein about like curses and things like that where it's like to deny yourself the possibility of like something could change me for the worse permanently in a game where people are playing this to sort of like inhabit characters and sort of see where the characters are going in addition to exploring these worlds, it's like, well, you're not really cutting yourself off from a big source of, uh, of, of entertainment and engagement with the game by saying like, no permanent effects, please. Yeah. Nothing negative happens permanently. And I don't know, I, it's a gaming philosophy that I just, I'm, I do not, I don't agree with and I find it hard to the quick save feature. See, yeah, <laughs> it feels like quick save. Yeah. <laughs> well, that shit happened. Hang on, let me go back. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I'm sympathetic to the people who are like, well, it's my character, and I don't get to play very often, and things like that. But I really do find that the game is much richer when you're like, oh, I'll risk it. Mm -hmm. I could lose this. I, I could this thing, this character that I've worked hard for. I could lose them, and mm -hmm. the risk of that is makes it when you win very satisfying well yeah i mean nothing worth having uh, is is worth having without a little risk sure I mean, certainly certainly, that's, certainly. That, that's just part of life yeah pardon the pun here but how do you see diseases infecting your game ah yeah yeah, yeah. like moving forward mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what do you commit to jim what am i committing to well let's see i i i take uh sort of both comfort and frustration in the fifth edition DMG with their very kind of like vague, it could work however you want sort of rules because I like the freedom of that, but 
some more concrete guidelines would be useful. So if you look at the three diseases that are in the DMG, tackle fever, sewer plague, and, and mm -hmm. site rot, they do have some commonalities. And this is where I would start. There's some kind of initial constitution save. And I do think this is appropriate for DMs to roll for their players. Like this is kind of one of those things where a disease is a type of threat where the, the suddenness of it, the onset, is sort of part of what makes it so scary. You well, know? it's the mystery. You don't know where you contracted it. From. Right, yeah. You don't know where you contracted it. You don't know when, uh, which, which goes to the other uh, commonality that you see with these diseases is that there's some kind of random uh, incubation period, a delayed symptom. Sometimes it's a couple of hours, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a couple of days, but it's not an immediate thing. It's not like a uh, threat save effect. There's a delay there. And in that delay, you can introduce a little bit of uncertainty. What happened? How did this? How did I get this? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They almost always contain, um, you know, in addition to like a list of symptoms, what it's like to experience the disease, um, what drawbacks you suffer from, some kind of comment on how it's cured. I would include conditions that need to be met for the use of the spell to work. So, like for me, I, I get over the sort of like these spells can cure anything by adding more specific conditions to them. So it's like, yeah, you're gonna need a lesser restoration. You're gonna need a remove curse for some of these. You might need both, you know, um, but you might not be able to just like walk up and do it. Yeah. You might have to align yourself in some way, prepare yourself for the ordeal. The, the, the person suffering might have to undergo some sort of treatment beforehand to make the magic effective. And then once those conditions are met, then you cast your spell. But uh, it's not like an automatic thing uh, that gets to happen. I, I do similar things with Raise Dead, where it's like, I don't mind Raise Dead. I don't mind Revivify. They're in the game for a reason. But you might have to go to a certain place to have it work. You might have to have this certain you know, component beyond mm -hmm. the diamond uh, for it. And so I, I look at it in that sense. These are components to the spell that, uh, that you have to have. And if you do uh, raise dead or revivify and you don't go to those special places, maybe that's when you bring a disease back from the other side. Right, exactly. That's when you could bring a, a disease back from the afterlife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's how your soul gets infected maybe in the first place, is, is not coming back properly mm -hmm. uh, from death. Uh, and so, and this is just like touching on living uh, you know, victims of, of plagues. Like I have a, 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 a disease that, that affects um, certain coastal regions of uh, land between two rivers that infects undead with life. It causes <laughs> skeletons to just decompose and, and to be returned to the natural order of things. It causes uh, similar things with other cadaverous uh, undead, but like a, a lich or a vampire or something would find themselves in excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. as as their the magic that tethers them to unlife is slowly eaten away by life itself uh and yet living no no problem not affected at all and all of that's just an excuse to be like i just didn't want any undead in the campaign at this point you know i yeah. didn't want them in this part of the world i wanted to do something else leaning pretty hard on undead uh and and so i wanted to find an excuse for why it wouldn't work but you know, I remember using things like this in, say, third edition, where I was like, yeah, this un this plague makes undead vulnerable to critical hits. <laughs> you know, the thief backstabbing, a rogue backstabbing, chipping away at those parts of the game that the players are comfortable with because they never change. Maybe this disease changes the way concentration works. Mm -hmm. Maybe this disease changes your profic proficiencies. Maybe this disease messes with your bonds and your flaws and your ideals. Maybe it gives you a form of madness. Maybe it uh, is a necessary precursor for some benefit that you have to get later on. Yeah. You know, maybe you have to undergo this period of adversity in order to unlock some a, a benefit later. Like there's all kinds of things you can do and all sorts of ways you can uh, tailor it to your game. You don't have to just think of like, okay, this affects person size sort of creatures in the world, you know, diseases that affect dragons, mm -hmm. you know, uh, diseases that only affect one kind of creature or, or one kind of, of magic use, you know, um, what if the gods themselves become diseased, you know, and, and, and transmit that <laughs> through their, uh, you know, through their uh, mortal, uh, you know, zealots and acolytes and, and things like that. I, I find that the more I think about it, the more I find ways to add it to, into the game and I, and I just, you know, share that with you guys, you know, come on. Yeah. Hope it catches on. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. 
The Web DM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web, Web Demons. Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, head on over to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Maidens with us on the expedition. I, d I don't know, but I'm busty. I don't think so. Uh, uh, she wants what is us your to name? She wants us to bust her out. Uh, no, no. I think she's. Never mind, Pyramid. Her name is Sherry. No, Sherry. Oh, I think it's a trick. Oh. Look, look, listen. I, I had a girl uh, break my heart named Sherry. No, don't pay attention to her. She's trying to trick you. I could her. save her this time. No, no, Pyramid. Listen. <laughs> what? What? Listen, what? listen, what? we've got to keep our heads about us. We'll all perish. At least that's what they said. But she's a busty maiden. Yes, <laughs> think of it. Mm. No, 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 no. Wait, I hear something. What? What do you hear? What? Oh, listen. <laughs> the rat! <gasps> rat! The rats! Rats! Oh, God! <laughs> God's above! Below!